Boker Tov, T good morning. Today is Friday, January 7th, Ere Shabbat Parshat Bo. I want to talk to you about um, the halo effect and a reflection on the halo effect in the parasha, and then a reflection on the halo effect with regards to people that we, um, that we otherwise trust. What is the halo effect? It is, um, it's, it's, it's also referred to as the halo um, error. It's a type of cognitive bias whereby our perception of someone is positively influenced by our opinions of that person's other related traits. It's a cognitive bias that, um, that sets in. And I, I mentioned uh, the parasha. We'll start with the parasha. There's a cognitive bias that God creates regarding um, everyone, uh, every one of us. And God placed the, uh, the, chen, the good feelings, grace of the people in the eyes of the Egyptians, the people being the Jewish people. Also, that man Moshe, he was a really great man in the land of Egypt. In the eyes of the servants of Paro and in the eyes of the people, uh, you took a poll, and people would rate Moshe favorably. Moshe, the man who has led nine plagues against Egypt, um, you know, they somehow don't attribute their uh, suffering to him. They, uh, he, he's doing fine. So how does that happen? It happens because God has sp sprinkled the pixie dust over the Egyptians, it would seem. So that they think good of us, they think good of Moshe. Um, and the only people, that, the only person who doesn't think highly of any of us or Moshe is Paro, right? He's the one who's left out, and that's why he continues to be hesitant, resistant, and defiant in the face of uh, in, the, in the face of the demands that Moshe is making. Um, and so, but that is a halo effect that God, who gives halos, you know, was able to create. But uh, the uh, halo effect. On the other hand, as I described by the definition, is a very different experience. I'll read the definition once more. It's a type of cognitive bias whereby our perception of someone is, pro is positively influenced by our opinions of that person's other related traits. So I think of you as a great person because I see certain good things about you. And I don't allow myself, I don't allow myself to imagine um, bad things about you because of that. Even when evidence is in front of my eyes, at least question marks in front of my eyes. Now, we, we, we do have a principle, and it's a very important principle, that you should uh, don the cuffs with people who have a track record. You, should, you shouldn't presume the worst in people. That's, that's true. That's true. But when someone, um, someone who we otherwise have held in high esteem is uh, behaving badly in front of us, we should not, uh, we, we should not accept that. Or even if they behave in a way which is questionable in front of us. And yet we do that all the time. I listened to a, um, to a very important little interview with uh, Yankee Horowitz. Yankee is, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Yaakov Horowitz, is a, uh, a really important man who, uh, who's dedicated his life to, uh, to helping victims of, of abuse. And, uh, um, and whether, whether young, or, and, and young or adult, um, people have been taken advantage of often by people in of influence who have been held in high regard. And um, this morning I was listening to an interview with him regarding the Chaim Walder affair. Chaim Walder, just to, uh, to in case you have not followed, uh, was, a, was a writer of very um, well-received and influential books for children, Kids Speak series. Uh, wrote in Hebrew, then translated to, to, to English, um, helping develop good qualities in kids and 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 midos tovos and and and, and just nice nice things in, in children. Um, he had a, a, a ongoing regular articles and and was involved in, in other elements. The Atid Neiman Haredi newspaper. He had a radio program as well, and um, was a very influential person in uh, throughout Eretz Israel and throughout the, the Orthodox world. Throughout the orthodoxy there and here. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, he seems to have had a very terrible dark side as a predator. Uh, and already uh, in November of this past year, accusations were published in, in Haaretz newspaper uh, by, by people who said that he had 
um, he had um, taken advantage of them, slept with them, um, was otherwise uh, controlling of them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, what was interesting, and something that Rabbi Yanki Horowitz pointed out, was that usually uh, you find in certain certain of these in certain circles that when accusations are made, especially especially in uh, in the, the liberal uh, newspapers against Haredim, that there's a tendency to circle the wagons. And yet, Yateid Naaman, um, you know, uh, you know, asked him to step down or fired him. I don't know. Um, he he lost his radio program, and he said, "Look, that's a sign that people have uh, are taking those taking those accusations seriously." Uh, he struggled very much to try to uh, to try to retain his good name, and there was a bait in that that was that was convened a Jewish court that was convened two weeks ago, not. A Haredi court, but a, but one of the chief rabbi of Tzfat, Rabbi Eliyahu, with another, actually a, apparently a Haredi partner rabbi who was uh, who was participating. Where they heard, where they asked him to, to be there, and he refused. And he, they heard uh, accusations of uh, close to two dozen women about what he had done, and they found him guilty in absentia, but they found him guilty of those accusations. And, uh, and um, the, p- the police apparently hadn't started their work for all the wrong reasons that people hadn't gone to the police. To, to issue their complaints and whatever whatever it was sits behind that that component, and two days later, two days later, Chaim Walder took a gun to his head over the grave of his son who had died of cancer a few years earlier in the cemetery, and killed himself, and left a suicide note blaming the rabbis of the Beitin for uh, for for driving him to that. And that was the end of his life. And many people say the suicide then is, is, is a final act of, uh, when, when for such people, the final act of, of rishus, of, of evil and cynic, cynicism. And, um, and so it was. Many people indeed saw it that way. At the same time, at the same time, there were others within uh, you know, different circles of the Haredi world who, uh, who somehow or another cha- stepped up in the terrible wrong way and um, and so the obituaries are written of him in, uh, in the Haredi papers left out the accusations that were made against him do not even tell us that he died from self-inflicted wounds and active suicide and um, and people uh, refer to him in, in, in high and glowing ways for all that he had, he had done in the world Rabianki described that um, that for the past uh, two months, since the accusations, it, would, it, it, it gave a strength and a koach and a, uh, to, to, uh, to women and others who were, who were victims of predators to step forward and to begin to, uh, to, to deal, with, uh, deal with the things that they had been keeping close to the vest and keeping inside and sharing um, what had happened to themselves in a way which was very important. Uh, and he said that... Uh, when that happened, when, when, when the suicide, act of suicide took place and the response to the suicide uh, was what it was, it uh, shut the door. People stopped coming forward as he sees it. Tragically, um, this, the victim, uh, uh, one, of his, one of his victims, uh, at least as, as her friends described it, uh, two days later committed suicide because she couldn't, she, she just couldn't survive in a world where um, the man who had done such things to her and to, and to others was suddenly being lauded once more. Pretty awful. And they discussed the, the halo effect, which, uh, which, which enables someone in the first place. It's really what he was talking about. Enable someone in the first place to get away with things right out in public, uh, things that they, that they shouldn't be able to do, but because oh, it's it's so and so a hush of a person, so whatever he's doing must be okay, must be okay, and the halo effect seems to have followed him um, as beyond the grave now, um, as he's as he has re, um, re, re, resuscitated his own. His, the own his own aura, as it were. With the help of everybody, who um, who stands, who stood, and praised him, the thousand people that attended his funeral compared to the handful that went to this girl's funeral. Terrible. It's a terrible story. Uh, Rabbi Rab- 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 Horowitz uh, 
made one other point. And he said, look, if a woman once said to him, you know, Rabbi, I trust you. He says, I want to make sure I understand what you mean by that. And if you say to me that you trust me because um, you, you believe that I, that, I, um, that I make decisions with integrity, then that makes me feel good. That's good. And if you, uh, you say you trust me to try to, to try to do good for other people, that makes me feel good. But if you say you trust me, um, even though you see me uh, getting in the, into a car with a young girl um, who I shouldn't be in the car with, and you say, I trust you because you're, uh, you're Yankee Horowitz, that's not, you shouldn't have that trust in me. We shouldn't have the trust in anyone. And we have to teach this to our children and teach this to our adults as well. <clears throat> of course, we should think highly of lots of people. And we should expect and demand people of, of people that they, uh, that they comport themselves um, in, in ways which are in keeping with our values and our principles, uh, not, not have uh, seclude themselves with others, and when suspicions arise about people's behavior, not to poo-poo them, because after all, it's so-and-so and so-and-so, um, but rather to take them seriously, to give credence to any of those accusations uh, for the sake of those who have suffered at their hands and for the sake of others who we hope to protect from them as well. Let's, uh, let's make sure we can have those conversations as one another with our children about all the things we've talked about in safe spaces a few years ago in our shul when we were still in the building. We're going to come back to having those conversations so that um, the people that matter most, the ones who are, uh, who, who, who are the most vulnerable, are the ones who are protected and not the ones who might take advantage of them. God forbid. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom.